Hello, I'm Emily on Sailing Vessel Temptress. I live aboard an antique sailboat, and for the last five years, I have not used a washing machine or a dryer. And that is not because I have somebody else wash my clothes. I do all my clothes, all the boat laundry, by hand aboard our vessel. And so I'm gonna to talk to you today about how we do that, what equipment we use, and some tips and tricks for doing laundry aboard a boat. When you live aboard a boat, you have a few options for doing laundry. One of the easy options for some people is to take it ashore and have somebody else do it or to use a facility at a marina or something like that. If you're just day sailing, you can take your clothes on and off the boat and you probably have somewhere else that you live that you could have a laundry facility. If you're coastal cruising, maybe you're spending time in marinas or there's a place ashore where you can take your laundry, someone else will wash it and you can pick it up. I personally, as more of a voyaging type, don't like doing that because I have to count every sock and piece of underwear and everything that I give to somebody to make sure that it comes back because a lot of laundry does get lost. It also means I have to load all my laundry into a dinghy, bring it all the way to shore, drop it off, wait, sometimes the machines are busy, sometimes it takes a while, then I have to probably go back, pick it up, bring it back to the boat in probably a salty splashy dinghy, so which is going to make them uh, dirty again unless you put it in a wet bag. It's just a whole lot of effort when I could do all my laundry, literally I I think I do laundry twice a month and I get it done in an hour every time and then it line dries. It's just so much easier and I actually, it's weird to say this, but I actually enjoy doing laundry aboard the boat. Um, I found a way to do it that I like and that's what I'm going to share with you today. Let's talk about what you need in order to do laundry. If you don't have a washing machine or a dryer, of course. First thing you need is, well, water. And water, when you live aboard a boat, is very valuable and very precious. Um, if you are coastal cruising, you can probably go to a marina and fill up your tanks fairly easily. You can, uh, here in Luperon, where we are, we can buy five gallon jugs of water. I think it's 45 pesos uh, for five gallons. And sometimes we do that. We also have a way of collecting rainwater. We have a huge awning aboard our boat. And all these tubes we can set up to go into buckets or directly into our tanks. So we collect water that way. And when we are in a cleaner location than this, in terms of water, we can make water. We have a Spectra water maker that makes seven or eight gallons per hour. So that is also an option for us. But all those options take a little bit of effort. It's not like we just turn on a hose and there's infinite water. So when we're doing laundry, we wanna make sure that we're doing it in a way that minimizes our water use in general. The next thing you need in order to do laundry is some sort of vessel in which to contain your laundry and some sort of method with which to agitate the laundry to get all of the dirt out of it. Now they make little cutesy travel size washing machines. Some of them have a crank on them. Some of them have like pressure that you build up in them. Uh, you can make a homemade washing machine with a five gallon Home Depot bucket with a hole in the lid and a clean plunger in it. Um, lots of ways to do laundry. If you are in a cold climate and you don't want to interact with that likely cold water, I can understand using something like that. But where we are and where we tend to sail in nice warm places of the world, um, cold water is not really a bother. So what I do is I just use my feet and a big old plastic bucket and use that to agitate the water and get the clothes clean. Uh, the buckets we use are very specific buckets. I'm going to recommend these buckets and I'm going to say if you're doing laundry by hand, on a boat or anywhere, buy these buckets. They're the one thing that I will recommend out of this video that everybody buys. Um, they are these big plastic buckets with two handles on them. Um, they're exactly the right size for our lifelines. The handles kind of tuck right in and lock them in. You can stack them up and they take up very little space. You might as well have five of them if you have one of them because they take up the same amount of space. You can crush them down so you can stow them like we put them in our lazarettes, but you can put them other places. Um, they are virtually indestructible. And my feet uh, fit in the bucket. It's really hard to stomp inside something like a five gallon Home Depot bucket, but these have plenty of room that you can stomp around. If you had a dog or you had kids, they probably make great bathtubs too. Um, but look at the link that we post because these are very specific buckets. We have purchased buckets like this from a farm supply store, things that look the same, but they were not the same. And within three months in the sun, they started cracking and disintegrating. It was terrible. Um, but we have this specific brand of bucket. We have one that is over 10 years old and still looks almost exactly the same as the brand new ones. It's a little less shiny, but it's held up. Um, so I've talked enough about these buckets, but these are awesome buckets. Buy these buckets and they come in every color that you want. So uh, you need a good bucket. Uh, and agitation, of course, like I said, clean plunger, 
wooden spoon, whatever you want to use to agitate your laundry, or your feet and your hands work fine too. You do need a way to wring out your laundry. You can do it by hand. If you have any sort of wrist issues or you're doing any sizable amount of laundry that does get exhausting, uh, you can wrap it around your lifelines and then twist it. That's a way to get a lot of water out, like um, bath towels. If you're using um, a thicker bath towel or you have a blanket or something like that, that's a way to get a lot of water out. I choose to use a wringer. So let me show you the wringer. This is a Dynajet BL44, I think it's called. These are really hard, really hard to find. Uh, if you find one on eBay or online somewhere, get it. Um, there are other ones that have oh, stainless steel parts, which are okay. There's one of those linked on our Amazon page. Um, but see, if you're looking for one, search for chamois ringer or towel ringer or industrial heavy duty ringer to make sure that you get something that's gonna hold up in the outdoor uh, environment. Uh, you can, if you want, to to wring things by hand. You can wrap them around a lifeline and then twist them to squeeze out all the water. Those methods work, but they don't work as well as having a heavy duty wringer. Uh, another nice thing about this is that we can tighten or loosen the rollers which makes more or less room for the clothes. So if you're washing something with buttons on it, or if you're washing thick things like towels or sweaters, you can open that up a little bit to give a little bit more room for the clothes to pass through. So having an adjustable one is nice. Uh, Clark made a slightly more compact handle that he welded out of some stainless steel, uh, which is holding up really well. We do take the handle off when we're sailing if it's mounted in this location because it does get caught on lines. Um, but this can also be mounted a lot of other places on the boat. It's great to mount it in a place where you can wring things and just have the water fall off into a bucket and reclaim that water. Because as we said, water is precious. This ringer is about 10 years old. It's all cast aluminum, which is nice. Uh, it holds up pretty well. The rubber on the rollers though, sometimes will degrade. So we keep a pillowcase, an old pillowcase as a cover to protect it from the sun. There's a little bit of a trick to using a wringer the right way to avoid getting stains on your clothes or damaging your clothes. First is adjusting that width between the rollers if you have buttons or things that you're sending through it. The other thing is guiding the clothing through it. When the wind is blowing like this, I sort of start feeding the clothes uh, upwind so that as the wind is blowing and they drift down toward one side, it's not a big deal. If they get too close to one end or the other, they can get caught up there and get rust stains or grease from the lubrication there onto your clothes. So you want to kind of pull them back toward the center all the time as you pull them through to make sure that you aren't getting stained or damaged clothes. But Ringer is a very good piece of equipment to have on a boat for doing laundry. After you wring your clothes, you need a way to dry your clothes. Um, we use uh, the lifelines. There are lines all over a sailboat, so those make good places to hang laundry. We also use uh, paracord that is strung underneath our solar arch. Once you have a place to hang your laundry, you need a way to attach it to the line or the place that you're hanging it from. Um, there are lots of different clothespins in the world. Uh, everybody has a different opinion about clothespins. We have learned over several years that we're going to lose clothespins over the side of the boat. So the thing that makes us feel the least guilty is plain old regular wooden clothespins with the metal spring on them. These ones are a little bit more broad. I think I got these as a gift from my mom. And um, they seem to be a little bit more secure, they twist a little bit less, they're a little more expensive, but whatever. Uh, but bottom line is these fall overboard into salt water, they're going to rot and disintegrate away and they're not gonna hurt anything. So those are a great option. I did recommend a ringer to somebody a year or two ago and he sent me a link to some stainless steel clothespins which I think are probably the best ones I've seen so far. They have a couple different diameters of line that they will fit around and he said they're very nice except for being a little slippery um, when they're wet. Um, so I'll try to find the link for those and put those in the description as well or in our Amazon storefront so you can find those. But uh, stainless steel clips that won't rust are also a good option for hanging laundry on a boat. A great method for hanging small things on a boat is what I like to call the underwear chandelier, um, which you can see why. Um, but it's a hanging rack. This one is plastic. It 
collapses down into a small size so you can store it somewhere. I'm um, not a huge fan of the plastic, but we had one just like this that lasted, again, like another 10 years. Um, so this one should last a while. They do make metal ones in different materials, different sizes, but having something like this makes it really easy to hang up small things like socks and underwear and not lose them over the side of the boat. And it's also great because if you have it hanging up outside and it starts raining, you could just grab one thing, bring it down below, and your stuff isn't gonna get wet. The last thing you need to wash some clothes is some chemistry. So let's take a look at what kind of chemistry I use to wash clothes here aboard Temptress. There are lots of different types of laundry detergent in the world, as we all know. Um, lots of different options for washing your clothes. And you're gonna have different levels of dirt on your boat, right? We have um, something that might be not very dirty at all, but just needs freshening up. We might have something like uh, our couch cushions after a long sail if they've gotten salty and dirty and oily and they need to be scrubbed. So um, it's possible sometimes to just wash your clothes in plain water. Sometimes there's enough soap left from the last time you washed them um, to freshen them up and get some stuff out of them. Um, if I have limited water available, I will just use plain ammonia. I will use a tiny bit of ammonia because a little bit goes a long way, but ammonia is going to be something that will take the dirt and the oil out of your clothes. Um, often I will add a tiny bit of powdered laundry detergent. Um, powdered laundry detergent is the easiest type of detergent to carry. Um, it's not as big of a deal if you spill it on a boat. It's lighter weight. Uh, it's great. I think this is literally from the same batch of laundry detergent that I had in the video I made three years ago. And this is the exact same bottle that I used um, that was holding scent booster at the time. Just a testament to how frugal we are and how we never throw things away. Um, but just a little bit of this will go a long way if I need a little extra boost to the ammonia alone. If I've got something super dirty like our couch cushions after a long dirty sail, I will use Dawn dish soap or whatever type of uh, hand washing dish soap um, with a little bit of water and a scrub brush and I'll really really scrub it and then I will rinse it with a little bit of the ammonia to get it out. Uh, so those are kind of the different levels of laundry. I'm going to, just as an experiment today, I have four different towels. And so I'm going to put one in plain water, I'm going to put one with just ammonia, one with a little bit of detergent, and one with both, and we're going to see how well they get washed. So, lucky we have these different colors. I'm going to use the yellow one's going to be plain water, the orange one is going to be plain ammonia, the green one is going to be plain detergent, and the pink one will be a little bit of both. So. Let's put that together. When I use ammonia, I literally just use that much. You don't need any more. Don't use it inside or in an enclosed space because it stinks and it's really bad for you to inhale. Um, but if you let it dissipate afterwards and evaporate, it should be fine. Okay, so we got ammonia in here. We got a little bit of ammonia, about the same amount in that one, which is going to have ammonia and soap. It's a little windy today, so I'll just... Okay, towel number one. Towel number two. Towel number three. And this one, just gonna be plain water. I shouldn't have used the yellow one in the yellow bucket, but that's how we did it. So. I'm going to do this one first. I'm gonna let all these sit for a little while longer and then we'll come back and check on them. 
All right, these have been sitting here for a good five minutes, so let's take a look at how each of these looks. Uh, the plain water, there's definitely some dirt that's come out. There was actually a tiny bit of sudsing uh, when I put it in here, just because, like I said, there might be a little bit of soap left in this towel from the last time we washed it. Um, it's nice because this towel is the same color as this bucket, so you can kind of just see the color of the water. Um, but, you know, this towel is going to be cleaner than when we first put it in there. This bucket was the ammonia only, and we can see that after sitting here, some of this uh, dirt, probably some skin cells, some dirt, um, some oil is coming off, and it's forming a nice film on the top. It's out of the clothes, uh, unlike this one that didn't do that. Um, so, uh, again, you won't have to rinse this like you would have to rinse soap because it's not going to stay in the clothes. But sometimes some of that film gets caught on certain parts of your uh, clothes and it will leave a little bit of dirt and oil on your clothes when you take it out. But it does have that um, ability to evaporate so you can do your laundry with less water. This bucket here was just soap uh, and you can see that the water is cloudy, which is partly the soap. It's slightly blue, which is the soap, and it smells nice, which is sort of the soap. Um, there's not, there's uh, some dirt coming out, but it's not staying on the top like it is in the ammonia. So it's actually suspended in the water. That's gonna make it a little bit easier to rinse some of the dirt out, but you're gonna be left with a little bit of soap in your clothes that you need to rinse. So it will require more water, but your clothes are gonna smell nice. This last bucket, this is what I typically do on any given day when I'm washing clothes, a little bit of ammonia, a little bit of soap. So this bucket does have a little bit of a nice smell. Uh, it's definitely got some dirt that's suspended in the water versus just maybe leaving a scum on the top of it. Uh, and this is gonna get the clothes pretty nice and clean. I only use the tiny bit of soap, so I can probably still get away with not rinsing it. Uh, I probably will rinse it just because we're in a place where we can get some water. Uh, but this, to me, gets the clothes the most clean. But that's just a comparison for you of the four different sort of chemistries that I've experimented with to wash clothes. When I'm using something like ammonia or uh, very rare instances, I will use bleach. I let the water sit for a while to let that chemistry evaporate so I'm not dumping it into the water. That's an important thing to do uh, if you care about your environment. So uh, let it sit. The other nice thing about letting it sit is you can essentially decant your water. All that mud and uh, dirt will go to the bottom and you can pour off the top pretty easily into another bucket and probably get one more wash load out of that water and uh, that's a great way to preserve water as well. So, let's finish up this laundry and uh, get on with our day. I hope that gives you a good overview of how we do laundry on the boat. If you've got tips and tricks, leave them in the comments below and give this video a like. Thanks, bye-bye.